this week's edition of World Crisis Radio. This is Webster Tarpley reporting from Washington, D.C. It's 3 o'clock in the afternoon on the 18th of September, 2015. Now, the big news, the big diplomatic news, and the big news in general is it looks like the United States is moving in a at least semi-rational direction. What we're referring to here, reports are that a United States-Russian Federation bilateral military commission, or at least military talks, are in the works, is in the works for, for Syria. And this has been the subject of multiple phone calls between Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov, one of our favorites on this program, and this guy we have, uh, John Forbes Kerry. Note the Forbes, uh, of course, of Skull and Bones and all the rest. But at this point, you can see how bad things have gotten here. The Skull and Bones guy is actually the lesser evil in the U.S. government. If it's a choice now between... Kerry and, say, Samantha Power, or uh, worst of all, the ISIS czar John Allen, then Kerry seems to be representing at least a semi-rational point of view. Uh, and indeed, this may be the um, personal uh, efforts expended by Lavrov to try to uh, create some sort of common field of uh, reality between himself and Kerry. In other words, it may be a triumph of, uh, of Lavrov's intelligence over the terrible uh, heritage that, uh, that Kerry brings to the table. Anyway, we may soon have this uh, going on. Um, so um, that is an amazing uh, development. Now, obviously, what do we have to do? Um, the, 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 and this also gets us then into the the question in uh, in Europe, right? We're, we're getting uh, all sorts of people in Europe coming forward with this idea that they want to break with the U.S. line, which is correctly seen as bankrupt and destructive. And it is uh, especially dramatic right now because of this refugee crisis, right? The wave of a million refugees are more already on the roads, moving on the oceans, many getting killed, but pressing forward. And then the United Nations report that says there's going to be another one million refugees coming towards Europe. Now, as of about last weekend, Saturday to Sunday after the broadcast, we began seeing that in particular the German government, and this starts with the German defense minister Ursula von der Leyen in the CDU, and then Frank-Walter Steinmeier, the foreign minister from the SPD. And then, of course, Madame Merkel uh, herself of the uh, CDU. And the common line was, we are turning to Russia. Uh, if we're going to stop this uh, civil war in Syria, which is obviously the main thing producing the, um, the, the, the refugees, right? it's ISIS and the civil war, it's Nusra, Al-Qaeda, terrorists, killers, butchers, right? Who wouldn't run? Anybody in his right mind is going to run and devil take the hindmost. So if you want to stop that, the U.S. effort over one year, thanks to the sabotage of ISIS czar John Allen, who is responsible for this wrecking operation, we know what it is. It's the policy of phony war. Phony war means you pretend to be at war with ISIS, and frankly, you're not. This is what the French generals did and the British generals did with Hitler in the uh, winter there of 1939 to 1940. It was a big nothing. It was a phony war. And of course, the phony war is a continuation, with other means, of an overall policy of the appeasement of terrorism. That means having the means, having the ability to wipe out large terrorist concentrations and not doing it. Uh, that's what we heard from Lavrov uh, over the past week. Lavrov pointed out in uh, a speech, I believe, last Sunday night on the Sunday Times uh, television program. It's not the British newspaper Sunday Times, but the Sunday Times um, 
television program, so maybe it's something like one of these blab shows here in the U.S. on Sundays, uh, we had uh, Lavrov coming out saying that the American command knows the location of large concentrations of ISIS butchers and refuses to attack them, refuses to bomb them. And one gets the idea also prevents others from uh, doing so, prevents others from uh, from taking on these uh, these groups of terrorists. So uh, that's the phony war. And that's the appeasement. And that's Allen, Allen up and down. And of course, Samantha Power. It is, as usual, the unholy alliance between the neocons, and of course, Allen representing the Petraeus Allen neocon generals clique, power hungry, insubordinate, restless, contemptuous of Obama, lots of racism thrown in there. We heard it all, right? We heard it from uh, General McChrystal, right? How they would make uh, dirty jokes about the president and the vice president. And yeah, okay, but unfortunately, it's not just. Uh, the locker room where we hear this stuff, they bring it into the policy arena and that we cannot and will not allow. These generals, uh, they, we, we, we ought to have some equivalent of Limoges, right? To Limoges, a failed and defeated general. We have plenty. There should be some town where you send them and they get to give courses about what they did wrong uh, and certainly not get rich in Wall Street like our, our dear friend uh, Petraeus. So, um, it's all going on. Uh, it's moving towards a denouement. Now, let me, uh, before we go any further, let me point this out. Russian President Vladimir uh, Putin will be in New York City, we believe, on the 27th of September. That's in just, it's about nine days from when we're recording. And, uh, it's going to be eight days from the first time you're able to hear this. So we got about a week to get ready. Uh, I think it is incumbent on the American people, or better yet, incumbent on the organic intellectuals of this American people. Somebody has to speak for them. This government we have does not speak for the American people, still less does the opposition. The opposition is even worse, this Republican fascist clown show that we've seen. We need to provide a worthy and decent welcome for a benefactor and friend of the United States, and that's Putin. In that great tradition that goes back to Tsar Alexander II and the Russian fleets coming to New York Harbor in September of 1861 and then in San Francisco in October of 1861, we have got to show that the American people are not represented by their lunatic elites who are bankrupt, desperate, flailing, uh, and very specifically, the foreign policy elite has gone bonkers. There's this Washington group think. They have a psychotic narrative. They say, well, at the beginning in Syria, there were these nice, peaceful demonstrators, but then evil Assad came along and started shooting. This is absolutely delusional. It is nonsense. There never was a peaceful phase in Syria. The shooting began back in the 1980s. The, these butchers got a bunch of military cadets in an auditorium for their graduation, locked the doors and killed every one of them. That's, and that was in the early 1980s, and it never stopped. So enough with this crazy narrative. Uh, more details on the welcoming of President Putin in just a minute. And here we are back with our second segment of World Crisis Radio. It's Friday the 18th of September, let me recommend uh, that you pay attention in these tempestuous times to Tarpley.net. Tarpley.net, it is rocketing up in popularity. We've gained about 130,000 places on the worldwide list, according to Alexa. Uh, this is undoubtedly due to the new institution of the daily briefing. So now we have something every day, new stuff every day on tarpley.net. And thanks to all of the listeners uh, in the United States. But we'd like to thank uh, Austria. We'd like to thank Great Britain, Canada, 
uh, other places that have uh, have been so um, um, kind as to take some interest here in my work. And now's the time for the big uh, geopolitical and world historical harvest time. A lot of this effort can now be turned into uh, actual changes in the course of world history and institutional changes that will last. So the, lu the lunatic narrative is there was a peaceful phase. There never was. Those guys were the Muslim Brotherhood. They were killers from the very beginning. Uh, but then Assad spoiled everything when he started uh, shooting. Now, remember, uh, as people in uh, Homs told me, people who had been dodging bullets with their children, fired by these lunatics, bearded lunatics firing from rooftops. Uh, those guys were foreigners. They were brought in from everywhere. A large group was brought in from Libya. Those were not even necessarily Libyans. In other words, the CIA secret army that was based in Benghazi against uh, Gaddafi in the year 2011 was shipped from Libya to Turkey. We know it. That's what Poor uh, Ambassador Stevens was doing when he got killed. He was meeting with a Turkish official, his last official act before the, uh, the assault on this uh, Benghazi diplomatic facility began. And they were coming from all sorts of places, from Chechenia, from Saudi Arabia, from uh, above all uh, Darna in, uh, in Libya, but from Morocco to Indonesia and from uh, Chechenia to Somalia. Every unemployed killer could get bankrolled by the Saudis, and that's what they did. And the Turks made it possible. They allowed that border to, uh, to uh, be open, and they still do. And everything, all of this idiotic debate in Washington this week ignores the fact the simple thing to do is cut the enemy supply line, close the Turkish-Syrian border. And if they won't close it on the Turkish side, then you help the Kurds to close it on the Syrian side. And that will be the beginning of the end of the vaunted caliphate. But that's exactly what Allen and these characters do not want. They want to use uh, Daesh, I ISIL, ISIS, uh, Islamic State, caliphate, whatever you want to call it. They want to use that against Iran. They want to use that against Russia in Chechenia and places like this, in the Caucasus, Transcaucasus, and so forth, right? In Dagestan, all these... Uh, area. So they're doing that. Let's get back to Putin. Putin is coming to the United Nations on September 27th, we believe, according to The Hill, uh, reliable uh, congressional watchers, but you know, politics in general here in D.C. Uh, Putin is likely to address the United Nations General Assembly on the 27th of September. Now, uh, let's... Uh, see what he might be doing. Thanks to Thierry Maison, uh, the world has gotten, and we have been pleased to add our uh, helping hand uh, to Maison and the Voltaire Network. Um, we just had the conference of the Collective Security Treaty Organization. The American media have never told you what that is, right? CBS, NBC, CNN, Fox, forget it. They have never told you what the, the Collective Security Treaty Organization is. Well, we have the Organization of American States for Latin America. We have the African Union for Africa. We have the European Union for Europe. We have NATO uh, for the North uh, Atlantic, or better yet, not even NATO. We have the um, Helsinki Accords, the OSCE. That's a better way to put it. Uh, we've got ASEAN, uh, Association of Southeast Asian Nations, and so forth. Uh, Organization of American States, I think I said it. But now we have a CSTO, Collective Security Treaty Organization. This is successor states primarily of the former Soviet Union. And they had a, uh, a summit, a security, their security council of that uh, regional organization, which are explicitly provided for in the UN Charter. Russia, Belarus, Armenia, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan are now offering and urging the uh, United Nations Security Council to accept their offer of deploying peacemaking and peacekeeping forces to Syria. Uh, and this comes in the light of one year of failure by the U.S., uh, who could have clobbered ISIS, but didn't because of the wrecker Allen and his network, right? His, that's the ones who cooked the intelligence. The, 